What up guys, I know a lot of you are wondering what exactly happened between me and Abby and I am going to tell you guys what exactly went on, well not like exactly, you guys will get the gist of it, but this is also a question and message for Abby's parents. This is something I've been wondering so badly. And that is, how am I a bad influence to your daughter? Like, I don't understand. Like, how am I a bad influence? Let me tell you right now, Mr. Mrs. Dude, I love your daughter Abby with all my fucking heart and soul. There's not a do for her to make her happy. And if I'm such a bad influence, if I'm such a bad influence, why would I sit here and help your daughter with her driving to help get her license? Why would I love her for her? Why would I accept her for the way she is if I'm a bad influence? Why would I not help her to try to get her own place? If I'm such a bad influence, I wouldn't have done any of that. I've done nothing but be there for your daughters. And for you to hate me for no fucking reason, what's up with that? You guys have no reason to judge me by my past. Just because I did something in the past, or I supposedly did something which I didn't do, that don't give you the right to fucking judge me. Judge me not by my past, but judge me by how I am now and what I do now. That's what you need by my past. I have done nothing but be there for Abby since day one. Me and Tiffany both, who's a very dear friend of me and Abby both. There's nothing I would not do for Abby. I want a life with Abby, yes. I don't care if she has mental issues. I don't care if she has one arm, no limbs. What about that? What I care about is your daughter. What I care about is Abby. I'm not a bad person. I'm not the bad guy that you think I am. I'm not just some random guy off the street. I'm not just some random guy talking to her. Okay? Abby knows me better than anyone else. And to be honest, and to be quite frank and honest with you, I know your daughter better than you guys even do. In a lot of ways. I really do know your daughter a lot better than you think I do. And I accept her flaws. I accept her mental issues. I accept the fact that she only has one arm. I accept and love everything about her. And for you guys to come along and say that I'm just some random guy when I'm not, that's fucked up. Abby is 25 years old, about to be 26 here in November. Y'all need to back off and leave her alone and let her be happy with me like she intentionally wanted. She wants to be with me, but you guys got it so in your head that she doesn't need to be with me because I'm supposedly a bad influence. When I'm not, I have done nothing but stand up and, you know, literally protect your daughter and do what I, because let me tell you guys something. You want to know how much I love and care about your daughter? When you guys split us up and made us split up the first time, I did nothing but cry out for her and try to reach out to her. I did nothing and try and try and soon enough that trying paid off why because i actually care about your daughter i don't give a fuck whether she has one arm she can have no limbs and i would still love her for who she is i don't care about her physical appearance or her mental issues what i care about is her as a person because let me tell you something nobody has ever treated me the way that Abby treats me. Abby treats me a hundred times better than anyone else. 
literally all of my exes have left me just because they don't like how I am. Your daughter loves and accepts me for me. She doesn't care about my flaws, weaknesses, what I can or can't do. Your daughter loves me for me. And honestly, you guys need to support her on being with me instead of tearing her down about it, saying I'm some random guy. If you take a look back at mine and hers conversations, yes, we, we do have normal couples conversations. But at the same time, I do try to help her. You know, I try to help her past her insecurities. I try to help her get over her anxiety, just like she did for me. She helped me get past my anxiety of not losing her. But because of you guys, that anxiety is back. And that's not fair one bit. That is not fair to me, and it sure as fuck ain't fair to Abby. If I did not love your daughter, why would I sit here day in and day out and help her with her driving? Okay, the rest of your family loves me to death. Her Uncle Warren, her Uncle Billy, her, her cousin Justin. They are, and that's just to name a few. They all love me to death. So why can't you guys get the fuck off your high-ass egotistical horses, give me a fucking chance, and see that I'm not the bad guy that you think I am? I'm really not a bad guy. And you want to know what I was going to do when Abby got here? I was going to sit down with Abby about a month, maybe a couple months, maybe a week after she had gotten here. And I was going to ask your daughter to marry me. Because I love your daughter that much. But you got it in her head that she doesn't need to be with somebody like me. And for what reason? Is it because of my career choice in music? Is it because of how I look? Or what's the issue? I don't understand. Okay? What my did should not play into how I am now and your look on me now, your view on me now, should not be determined by my past. Your judgment on me should be based upon how I treat your daughter now. Not by my past because of what my ex did. That's not fair to me, and it's not fair to Abby. There is not a damn thing I would not do to be with your daughter. If I could give the whole world to your daughter right now, I would do that without question. I would give up everything I own for your daughter. I would walk away from my music career, and I would leave that all behind for her. So don't sit there and say I'm just some other guy because I'm not just some other guy. You might hate my guts for what my ex did, but I don't give a fuck. What my ex did is not on me. That's on her. And it's not the same Tiffany that you guys are thinking of. It is a totally different person. See, what my ex Tiffany did is hacked into my account when I was at my doctor's appointment because she found out I had left her because she was in a mental hospital for seven, eight months. And I didn't know what to do. I didn't know she was in a mental hospital until her family told me several months later. So, you know, I made the smartest choice I could and I left. But then what does my ex Tiffany do as soon as she finds out me and Abby are together? She turns around, hacks my account, and messages herself, you know, certain pictures from years and years and years ago, making it look like I was cheating on Abby when I was not. I would never do anything to hurt your daughter, ever. All right, so what my ex did to me, that's not on me. That's on her. That's in the past. Leave the past alone. Let the past go. Leave the past in the past. And take a look at me now and how I'm helping your daughter now. I love Abby with all my heart and soul. There's no denying that. And there's no denying that your daughter loves me just as much. But honestly, you guys need to grow the fuck up and let her be an adult. Let her be on her own. Let her be with who she wants to be with. I've done 
nothing but be there for Abby since day one. And will keep so until my dying breath. And you want to know why? Because I truly love and care about your daughter. And nobody has treated me half as good as she does. See, unlike her exes and my exes, we treat each other the exact same. And we treat each other fairly. Yeah, I will admit I post a lot about Abby. I post that I love her a lot. But you know what? That's typical couple stuff. That's what couples do. And I'm sorry if I do that a lot. And I'm sorry if it seems I'm obsessive. But here's a reality check. I'm not obsessive. There is a difference between obsessive and loving someone. Loving someone is what I do for your daughter. Being obsessive would mean not even allowing them to have any friends. I want Abby to have friends. I want her to be able to have people that she can go to. Like myself, Tiffany, and even some of my own friends who she's become very, very close with. Being obsessive means let them have a life. You constantly control what they do, who they talk to, who they're allowed to hang out with, who they're allowed to see, who they're allowed to talk to and not talk to. That's obsessive. I'm not obsessive. Okay? I love your daughter. And there's nothing I would not do for her. Hell, honestly, if I could, I would walk there right the fuck now. Just to show her that I care. I really would if I could. If she wasn't so far away, I'd walk there. Without question. I really and truly would. You don't know how bad you guys hurt me by doing what you did. You might not know me. And I get that. But maybe if you stop for a second and shut your fucking mouths for two seconds and gave me a chance, maybe you'd see I'm not the bad guy that you think I am. You know, I love sports. I love hunting. I love fishing. I love being outdoors. I love doing photography. Like, how am I a bad person for that? How does that make me a bad guy? I don't understand. What you're doing to your daughter is wrong. You're influencing her. Yes, she might have a part to do with it, but that's fine. That's whatever. But what you're doing is being unfair, not only to, but to Abby as well. You're being very unfair to her. Deep down, she wants to have a relationship with me. And everyone knows it. I know it. And several of our friends that me and her talk to know it as well. But what do you guys do? You come along and say that myself and several of our friends are bad influences? No, we're not. We've done nothing but be there for your daughter and try to help her. Especially myself. There have been days where I've been sick as fuck, and it's been 2 or 3 in the morning, and, you're, and Abby would call wanting help, and I would be right there helping her. I wouldn't give a fuck about sleep. I didn't care about whether I was sick. All I cared about is your daughter and being there for her. Because your daughter means the world to me. And Tiff, I know what you're saying, but this is like this is before you know that issue. This is before that. That's what I'm getting at. And shout out to my best friend and brother, Anthony Burns. I want to say thank you, man. You've done a lot for me, more than you know, brother. So shout out to Anthony Burns, man. You know, and what I the, I still don't, I still cannot wrap my head around how you guys think I'm a bad influence when I've done nothing but be there for your daughter and help her as much as I could. Since day one when me and her met through my best, through our best friend Miranda, 
back last year, I told Abby, I don't care about mental issues. I don't care about what you can or can't do. I don't care about you only having one arm. What I care about is you and who you are as a person. And I'll be just with you. Abby could have no limbs. She can be blind. She can be deaf. She can be whatever. But what matters to me ultimately isn't any of that. It's her and who she is. Because you know what? I see past the insecurities. I see past the fear. I see past what she can and can't do. And I love her for who she is. Now, let me tell you, being a bad influence is, you know, basically saying, oh, you can't do this. This person is doing this. Basically starting trouble. But me and my friends have not been a We tried to help Abby as much as we could. You know, when she needed somebody to help her with her driving test and somebody to encourage her to keep her uplifted, I was there. We were there. So how is that a bad influence? I don't understand. You guys' perception on me is so messed up. I'm really not a bad guy. I'm not the evil, maniacal, manipulative person that you guys think I am. If anything, if I seen a homeless guy without a shirt walking down the street, I'd give that man the shirt off my back. Because that's the kind of person I am. If somebody needed change, I'd give them what I had. So how am I a bad influence? Just because your daughter hasn't met me face to face yet, that all of a sudden makes me a bad guy? No. Me and your daughter FaceTime every day. Now let me tell you something. I've gotten to know more about Abby than even you guys know. I really have. And let me tell you something. Abby is the most amazing, wonderful, kind-hearted, the most kind-hearted person I've ever met. When she loves and cares about somebody, she fights for them, just like I fight for her. You know, there's not anything I would not do for your daughter. I would fight for her. I would die for her. I really would. If Abby were sick, I would be right there by her bedside every second of every day and every night until she got well. That is not obsession, Mr. and Mrs. Duder. That is true love. And I truly love your daughter. And I would not do for her. Hell, to be honest with you, if she wanted me to move there, by God, I'm packing my shit up and I'm going there. But for you to sit there and judge me based off of my past, that's not fair. Even though you guys have turned me away time and time again, I have still stood by your daughter's side. I have still openly welcome you guys to give me a chance and I will continue to do so. I will continue to fight for Abby, no matter what you guys say, no matter what you guys do, I will continue to fight for her. I will continue to fight to be by her side every second of every day, as long as it takes to make you guys realize that I'm not the bad person that you think I am. And to make you see that I'm actually the opposite of that that I actually do love and care about her, that I do want to have a life with her, that I do want what's best for her. You guys have got her so bottled up and so afraid to live her life that it's literally eating at her. 
It's eating at her emotions and her head every day. You guys need to let her go. Let her be herself. Let her be with who she wants to be with. She is afraid to live her life the way she wants because you guys have her so bottled up. And that's not fair. She wants to be able to sit there and say that, yes, I have an amazing boyfriend. She wants to be able to say that, knowing that you guys, you know, back her up, knowing that you guys support her. And instead of tearing her down, why don't you guys try supporting her for a bit? Let her show you how good of a person I really am. Let her show you that I'm not a bad guy. Why can't you do that? If anything, don't do it for your, but do it for your daughter. Do it for Abby. Let her show you that I'm a good guy and that I do care. Because I do genuinely care. More than you guys might think. Because let me tell you something. Before I met Abby, I was in a very terrible state of mind. Destroyed. I was beaten down. And honestly, at one point, I was on the verge of suicide. Because I kept getting bullied. I kept getting beat down. I kept getting pulled down. Tormented. I kept getting discriminated against. But you know something? When I met Abby, she gave me hope again. She made me believe that I could get out of that rut that I was in. And sure enough, because of Abby and because of God, I got out of that rut. I got out of that situation. I became a better person. And I vowed to Abby to never to end my life. And I have not tried to end my life once because of your daughter. And you want to know why I fight for your daughter? Because she's worth it. Your daughter, Abby, is worth fighting for. Every second of every day, I fight for your daughter because it's worth it. Every day. And I don't care what you guys think. I mean, you guys can think what you want. But in the end, the truth of it all is, I care about your daughter and I'm not a bad influence. Your daughter, Abby, has done more for me than I can ever repay. Because of her, I've gotten my life back on track. Because of her, I have fought like hell to get my music career back on track to where I want it to be. Because of your daughter, every day I wake up positive. I wake up knowing that I can get through the day, knowing that I have an amazing girlfriend to share my life with. Every day I wake up to talk to your daughter is a good day. And you want to know why it's a good day? Because she pushes me to do everything that I want with my life, just like I do with her. Your daughter has not let me once give up. And I'm not letting her give up either. When she felt like she couldn't get her license, I told her, yes, she could. I sat there and I helped her study. I gave her the tools that she could use to remember to pass her driving test. I like working a job. I encourage her doing what she wants to do with her life. But for you to just take that all away without even giving me a fair chance. You're being very unfair to your daughter. And you need to realize that. Okay, I love Abby more than anything on this whole earth. I really and truly do. There's not a day that doesn't go by where I don't thank God for sending me your daughter. Honestly, Abby is the best thing. 
And she's told me time and time again that I am the best thing that ever happened to her. And you want to know why? Because I'm there for her. Every day, every second of every day, I am there for her. I might not be able to be there physically, but I am always there for her spiritually. I am always there for her no matter what. And you can sit there and say what you want. Like, oh, you guys have never met in person. Well, maybe if you would give it a chance and let her come here or let me come there so we can meet in person, maybe then you guys will see that I'm not a bad guy and that I do truly care. But what you're doing is unfair and it's unjust. You need to let Abby live her life. Let her be an adult. Stop holding your daughter back. Your daughter is a very wonderful, very kind-hearted, very loving, caring person. She's honestly one of the most amazing person, people I've ever met in my entire life. And I do know about the issues with her arm, and I accept those issues. More than anyone, I accept them. I accept what's going I accept the fact she has only one arm. Hell, my best friend Taylor, who I've known since high school, has one arm. I was raised around kids like Abby my whole life. So I am very well aware of Abby. I'm very well aware of what she can and cannot do. But that's okay. Because you know something? I still love and respect your daughter more than anything. Your daughter means the world to me. Daughter. And you guys can do what you want, but the truth is, I'm not going anywhere. You guys can try to push me away. You guys can tear me down, say I'm this, say I'm that. You guys can try to block me, keep us from contacting each other. But at the end of the day, truth be told, I'm not going anywhere. I am not leaving Abby's side no matter what. Until she tells me to leave, I am not going anywhere. Even if she does tell me to leave, I will still stay by her side because that's what being faithful and that's what being loyal to somebody is. And I am very faithful and very loyal to your daughter. Okay, I have shut away some of my closest friends that I've known for years, telling myself that me and Abby are in this together. I've gotten rid of friendships from people that I've known for many years, people that I've grown up with for Abby, because that's how much I care about her. Because I know deep down she's a damn good person, and I know deep down she does want to be with me. But what has her scared is you. You guys have her so scared to be with me that she tells me that she just wants to be friends, and that's not fair. What you're doing is unjust and unfair, Mr. and Mrs. Duder, and it needs to stop. Instead of tearing Abby down about being with me, you guys should be supporting her. Saying, hey, you got this great guy who loves you and cares about you. We support you. Hell, we'll even help you go there to visit so you can meet him face to face. But instead of doing that, you guys tear her down and make her afraid of me. And there's nothing to be afraid of. Because I would never do anything to hurt Abby. I would never do anything to put her in harm's way or in any kind of danger whatsoever. So how does that make me a bad influence on your daughter? That's what I don't understand. I have done nothing to wrong your daughter. I've done nothing to give you guys reason to hate me. And for what reason? Because of my physical appearance? Because of my career choice? Like, seriously, grow up. 
You guys need to let go of your freaking egos and open your eyes to see just how happy Abby was with me and how happy she wants to be with me. So stop the judgment. Stop judging me by my past. Like, it gets annoying. Hey guys, something that, you know, I live by every day. And this is from Matthew 7, 7, Matthew 7, 1 through 5. Do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look? and speak of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay attention to the plank in your own eyes. How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye? When all, all the time there is a plank in your own eye. You hypocrite, first take, then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Now let me tell you something. That verse right there, that scripture, is something that I live by every day. Every day I live by that. And what that is saying is to not judge others based on appearance and based on what you hear from others. Maybe if you would take your folds off of yourselves and open up your eyes, maybe then you would see I'm not a bad guy. Judge me not by my past. Judge me not by my past doing. Judge me by myself and the now and the present. You know, it's it's funny. You know, you guys sit there and say that you care about your daughter and that you want what's best for her and that you want her to be happy. Tear her down. And for what reason? Yes, I am a God-fearing man. Always have been. I was raised a Christian. I was raised an army brat. My dad was 82nd Airborne, Staff Sergeant, United States Army. Been deployed many times to different bases all over the world. Now let me tell you something. If my dad caught me doing anything bad to anybody, he would put he would literally put his foot up my ass. I was raised to treat women right. I was raised to treat them with respect. And I love and respect your daughter with every ounce of my very being. So I don't understand how I'm a bad influence on your daughter. I really don't understand it. I've done nothing but be there for your daughter since day one. Every day, every second of every day, I have been there. I have been there when she's been upset, when she's been sick, when she's been happy. I was there when she told me that she passed the, the current part of her driving test. 
Hell, I helped her prepare for it, and so did my mom. My mom even sat there and helped. But what you guys need to realize is that if the rest of your family loves me, why can't you guys give me a chance to do the same? Why can't you guys take that same chance and give me the exact same chance that the rest of your family gave me? Like Uncle Warren, Uncle Billy, Cousin Justin. Shout out to all three of you guys. Love you guys. Y'all are awesome. Why can't you guys give me the same fair chance that they gave me and get to know me? That's what I don't understand. Because as I said, instead of judging me, get to know me before you judge me. Get to know me as a person. Instead of sitting there judging me, I'm in another state or, you know, my past of what my ex did. Because what my ex did has nothing to do with me. I mean, it does. It does have something to do with me, but that wasn't on me. That was on her. That was her doing, not mine. I had nothing to do with that. I honestly had no idea that my ex did that until I got home and Abby told me. And believe me, when I found out, I flipped out on my ex. I went off on her. And do you want to know why? Because it wasn't fair to me that my ex did that. So I extend this invitation to you, Mr. and Mrs. Duder. I extend this invitation to you to get to know me as a person. Put down your judgment. Throw your judgment aside. Cast it out. Cast your previous judgment on me aside and give me another chance and get to know me. That is my invitation to you. I would love to get to know you guys. I really would. And I would love for you guys to get to know me. So I ask you, will you give me that chance and get to know me? Let's start over. Let me and Abby be happy together. Let me and her be happy and you guys get to know me. Because I'm more than willing to do that. I really am. And you guys can message me at any time, day or night. You guys can message my mom anytime, day or night. If you guys go to Abby's profile, my mom is on there. You guys can speak with her. But all I ask, all I ask is that you get to know me before you judge me. Because I've taken judgment from everybody my whole life. Whether it be from people in school, whether it be record labels judging me by my physical appearance and not my music, whether it be people judging my music, haters judging me for my physical appearance, I have been judged every day of my entire life. And it's not fair. I don't judge your daughter based on how she looks. I don't judge her based on her mental state or what she can or can't do. I don't judge her based on the fact that she has one arm. I judge her based on how she treats me, on how well she treats me. I judge her based on the fact that she is always there is day one. You guys need to open your eyes and see that I'm not the bad guy that you really think I am. Because your perception of me is so awful. So, I ask you one last time, Mr. and Mrs. Duder, 
Will you cast your judgment of me aside from before and get to know me as a person and to see that I'm not a bad guy? And Abby, if you are seeing this, I want you to know that I'm not giving up on you and that I do truly love and care about you. And that I do want things to work. I really do. And I hope that you... I love you, Abby. So much more than you know. And I hope that this live stream shows that. 